so the conclusions one can draw from here is Uh, in the case of intrinsic semiconductors, Fermi level lies exactly in between the valence and the conduction bands and if the effective masses are equal, effective mass of electron and hole are equal, the Fermi level is unaffected by temperature but usually effective mass of hole is more than with rising temperature, uh, the Fermi level shifts up. And if in, in some cases, effective mass of electron is more. In those cases, the Fermi level shifts down with an incrementing temperature. So, uh, usual case, when effective mass of hole is more, how to understand that curve? As a function of temperature, effective mass of uh, uh, Fermi level is shifting up. What does it mean? Fermi level shifting up means the maximum energy level an electron can go is becoming higher and higher with an increment in temperature. Right. So next comes the case of n-type extrinsic semiconductors. So here I am doping with a pentavalent impurity and uh, I will have electrons from both the uh, dopant atom and from the intrinsic material. So the total contribution to number of electrons will be number of intrinsic electrons that come from the bond breaking in the intrinsic semiconductor and number of the donor atoms getting ionized. So I have to count, I have to consider only the donor atoms that are ionized. Let's say I am doping with nd number of donor atoms and I have to consider only those atoms that are ionized. So, how to count those number of atoms that are ionized? Uh, counting the number of atoms that are ionized, that loss an electron will be the number of ion atoms that are ionized. So, uh, we have to multiply with the probability of losing an electron with the total number of donor atoms. So, here I am multiplying with the uh, probability of losing an electron with the total number of donor atoms and I get the number of donor ions and as t tends to 0 this expression becomes like this and when t tends to 0 the total number of electrons I can see is only the electrons from the donor atom because at very low temperatures the number of intrinsic electrons, the electrons coming from the bond breakage are very less compared to the number of electrons from donor atom. So, this n becomes nd plus at very low temperatures. So, now I have to equate these two equations. I have an expression for n and an expression for nd plus. If I equate these two, I can get an expression for the Fermi level. So this is the expression for Fermi level. So the Fermi level at t tends to 0. As t tends to 0, Fermi level in the case of n-type semiconductor will be in between donor level and conduction band edge. <coughs> As t tends to 0. <laughs> Next. <coughs> what happens? as T increases. When the T value, when temperature rises more and more, the contribution from intrinsic, intrinsic donors, there will be more bond breakages. So at very low temperatures, all these donor atoms will get ionized with a little rise in temperature and further there will be no contribution from donor atoms because all atoms will be ionized already at low temperatures. So, this term becomes saturated and after a finite temperature this term starts increasing. This term starts increasing and the contribution from intrinsic carriers increases and remember in the case of intrinsic semiconductor the Fermi level lies in between valence band and conduction band. So, with a rise in temperature in this case the Fermi level shifts 
to the level of EI. Now I want to calculate the general expression for number of carriers in terms of donor energies. For that I am substituting the value of EF obtained previously here. So exponential of logarithm will become a constant and remaining all other terms will remain as it is. So finally we got an expression for number of electrons in the case of extrinsic semiconductor and that number is proportional to the number of square root of number of donor atoms and square root of number of intrinsic carriers. So this total number of electrons in extrinsic semiconductor n type extrinsic semiconductor will be depending on the number of donor atoms and number of intrinsic carriers. Now comes the case of p type extrinsic semiconductor. Here I am taking, I am doping the intrinsic semiconductor with trivalent impurity. So it will have, it will create a hole in the bond. A absence of electron in the bond is called hole. So there will be holes equal to the number of uh, do, do, uh, acceptor atoms in the valence band. So how many ever number of atoms were doping here? Those many number of holes can be generated, but we need to ionize. So here comes the probability. How many number of acceptor atoms are getting ionized? will be the number of electrons coming and uh, replacing those holes will be the number of holes generated. Here we have to count total number of holes. The holes will have contribution from intrinsic carriers that is the bond broken when, when a bond is broken a hole and electron pair will be generated. Another contribution is from number of acceptor atoms. So number of holes can be counted, Num number of holes generated in the acceptor atoms will be equal to number of acceptor atoms multiplied by number of electrons that are coming and uh, replacing those holes because we can count, we can predict uh, at, at a particular location in the valence band a hole is existing by means of if some electron comes and sits there, we can say that there exists a hole. So number of electrons occupied multiplied by total number of acceptor atoms gives you the total number of holes generated and at as t tends to 0, this term becomes like this. And now as t tends to 0, total number of contributions to holes will be equal to only number of acceptor ions. So equating these two expressions I will get an expression for Fermi level as usual and here the Fermi level lies between the valence band edge and acceptor level and as T tends to as T increases as the temperature increases this term gets saturated number of acceptor ions will be already ionized and will have contribution only from intrinsic carriers. So intrinsic, uh, the Fermi level also shifts to intrinsic level. So Fermi level shifts from uh, valence band acceptor level middle to valence band and conduction band middle. This is about the P type extrinsic semiconductor carrier concentrations. So if we get an expression for uh, ca total carrier concentrations in terms of Na we have to replace this EF here and finally we get an expression for Na sorry the total carrier concentrations in p-type semiconductor uh, will be proportional to number of acceptor atoms more the number of acceptor atoms more will be the holes generated so this is all about carrier concentrations in
intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors